In 2016, Jane was diagnosed with bone cancer and in order to save her life, had to have her right hip and half of her pelvis removed. She was told she would never walk again without the help of crutches. But Paul was determined to do something to help and he set out to design a brace in his garage and after just three years of development, incredibly, as you saw, Jane managed to walk into our studio this morning with the aid of this so-called exoskeleton. And uh, walking wonderfully there together and sitting hopefully comfortably with us now with the exoskeleton next to you. Gosh, I touched it there. I don't want to knock it over. That could be disastrous, <laughs> couldn't it? Um, right, look, take us from the beginning. You found yourself in a life-threatening situation, didn't you? Yes. In 2016, um, yeah. after some initial tests, I was diagnosed with chondrosarcoma, which is a primary bone cancer. And it was in my pelvis yeah. and in my hip. And the only way to um, give me an opportunity for life, realistically, was for it all to be removed. Um, so... I had surgery uh, the next month in yeah. April 2016 and they removed all my pelvic structure on the right-hand side together with the top of my long bone um, in my right leg as well. Wow. So you had to make a brutal decision which you knew the implications were going to be massive but you made the decision for the obvious right yes. reason of saving your life. Um, what did it leave you with? What challenges did it leave you with? I think going into the surgery, we did some practising beforehand mm. with crutches and you think, oh, OK. But when you actually come out and you have got no support whatsoever oh. um, and I'm totally reliant on two crutches at that point in time, they were where the load was taken down into the ground. Mm. So... Um, then you had... And did that cause pain and discomfort and, and stress in the body in ways I guess you couldn't have predicted before the operation? The, the worst problem um, in the medium term was the shoulder mm. um, because it was the right side and that was where the load was being taken primarily when I'm loading down on that crutch mm. um, and it started to give me a lot of problems. Because, yeah, I mean, you've got no support at all there. No, no. So no. you've described it as sort of a, a feeling of sinking, sinking on one side? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right, wow. Gosh. I mean, if I do load on that side, I, I just sink and sink and sink. And Gosh. The, the muscles don't hold the bone, so... it keeps travelling. Right. So this is you trying to move using the bars that they often use in therapy, don't they? Yes. To help you generate strength in, in all areas of your body. Yep. So you're watching this struggle, Paul, feeling for her every painful step of the way and think, what do we do about this? How, do, how did it come about? It's, it's hard to watch, but the... I bet it is. Somewhat naively, we thought after the operation, well, we'll go out and buy something to help her. Right. Mm. And we went all around all the big companies, etc. We even spoke to their R&D departments and they all said, nope, there's nothing. Gosh. And, you know, people like Jane are just left with a wheelchair and two crutches and a, you know, get well card. Yeah. Um, so we'd, we'd started that journey and then COVID came along, wow. lockdown, and I thought, well, I'll have a go. How hard can what, it be? What, what <laughs> you, you just throw that away. Oh, I'll have a go. Brilliant. Come on. Have you what done anything before? What was your before? Job before? Yeah. <laughs> what, was your, what was your profession before this? Uh, it was nothing like this. I was in sales and marketing and right. computer systems. <laughs> Which was so. completely hit by COVID, presumably. Well, I'd actually already given up work to, to look after Jane. To look after her, right. So yeah. it, was, it was an ideal opportunity. I've always been good at doing things. Right. You like All making right. things. Like you? making things. Yeah. And so... I mean, was... there's making things and there's making an exoskeleton. I mean, that's people quite might knock up, well, know, People knocked up banana bread in lockdown, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> uh, and they, you know, maybe got round to the DIY that they put on the back burner. But, but you decided to create something brand new, which... I wanted to create something revolution. that would help us stand up. Yeah. Because if you can imagine standing on one leg, mm. right, it hurts after five, ten minutes. And that was the situation Jane was in. So we started simple, and that was the original aim. And we had a lot of failures. There was an awful lot of YouTube watching, because that's how I learned how to do all wow. this. You got some? Did you get some expert help as well? Some... We've had we've had expert help in rehabilitation and prosthetics from mm. 
ideas and thoughts. Mm. They're all people who used mm. to work at Headley Court, the Defence Rehabilitation Centre. Right. right. And who just happened to be nearby us, and they've been superb. And right. I bet their reaction was 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 one of, of well, what was their reaction? Were they grateful? Were they confused? Amazement, I think, probably. Confusion, amazement. amazement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Why <laughs> anybody was so daft. So how long did it take you to, to get this together, the ecos? Well, it's evolved um, yeah. from initial idea of getting something that she could stand in, and then we thought, oh, we've achieved that. So we, then we thought we'd try and create something that Jane can walk with one crutch, because if you've got one crutch, you've got one mm. hand spare. Right. And then you can carry a cup of tea and all right. those other bits mm. and pieces. Life becomes liberated. <laughs> and then, just before Christmas, we got it to the point where Jane could walk with no crutches. Goodness. And that is Amazing. that's the big... And, I mean, Jane, what did you think of all this? Um, well, I'm in well, incredibly grateful, yeah. of course. Um, and, you know, it, it has, again, it's changed my life, mm. positively. Wow. Um, it's... I feel as though I'm, you know, sat here talking to you and it, it's just brought me up. I can stand up, um, I can walk um, and it's given me a lot more confidence. You know, mental health is so important and I feel mm. so much better. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been great. Did you have much confidence in Paul when he said, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, go, to the, I'll go to the shed at the bottom of the garden, <laughs> I'll work something out? <laughs> Paul will never let a project go. That's so lovely. I'm not surprised that we've got... Well, he's not, he's not prepared to let you go by the sounds of it. That's, no. that's the most oh, important well. thing. Yeah. And I and imagine it's, a re it's helped your relationship as well because you've gone from purely caring to liberating. It's been which fantastic. Is wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. She lo loves cooking now. It's something, <laughs> something she can do. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like simple things like that. She can look people in the eye and talk to them. People are going to be watching and going, where do I get hold of Paul's garage exoskeleton? Get in touch with Is Paul. Is there a chance <laughs> that you could make this work for others? That's the intent, Good. right? So I had, a, I had a, a binary choice. I could have just stayed in the garage and tried to improve it for Jane. Or mm. I could actually sort of look at it from a wider point of view. Fantastic. And it was... We, th there's a website uh, that Mayo Clinic runs in America, mm. and yes. a, it, they were asking the question, how can you live without a hip? Mm. And I went on it, and there was page after page after page of really hard stories to read. Mm. And I said to Jane, I said, let's put your story up as sort of a ray of light. Fantastic. Yeah? Oh and um, this one woman came back. I see how emotional you are about yeah. it. It's huge. Yeah. This woman wrote back and she said, thank you for giving us hope. Oh. And that's tough. Yeah. Mm. So it's been good for both of us because mm. Paul's yes. been able to, you know, when he watched me go into surgery, that must have been one of the most difficult things because he could do nothing about it. You feel helpless, I suppose. Yeah. Helpless. Yeah. Terribly, terribly yeah. helpless. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. now there's the opportunity that um, it's a bit chicken and egg. This is a totally new device. It's amazing. All right. Who can it help? What mm. other conditions can it help? And even through the, the small exposure we've had so far, I've already had. Uh, Expert uh, medical experts contact me mm. saying I've got some ideas, etc. So well, well, really, turning that the helplessness the of Jane physically and you emotionally into something so powerful and so positive is inspirational. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and let's hope the power of your hope yeah. goes hope. on and and gives it to others. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Jane Thank you. Paul. Thank you so much for joining us.